Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit, he signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's basically all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's just more. Cool. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Good afternoon, everyone. It looks like we are live at just after five once again. Oh, my favorite part of the afternoon. I've got my coffee and I've got my cryptocurrency uh, dashboard opened up in front of me. My favorite part of the day. <laughs> Mm. Ah, damn, that coffee's good. I love a posh coffee. Can't beat a latte if you ask me. So quite a few exciting things to go over today, as there always is. But uh, before we uh, get into that, let's just have a quick look and do a, uh, a medical health checkup on the system here. But let's have a look at the gossip. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's the first thing that I want to go over was this. I made this to go with um, this brief description of what Bitcoin was. So I was trying to explain this succinctly to uh, a fund manager. <clears throat> and I, so I put my, got my head on. I was like, right, what, what is Bitcoin? And so I thought, right, this, this is from all the experience uh, that I've had now. How can I explain this as simply as possible? Uh, you know, the, the parts of it. And uh, and this this is what I came up with, with this lovely image. I was quite impressed with this. So I just said, um, Bitcoin is the foundation layer for all future digital technologies secured and underpinned by economic principles. It's the economic principles that make Bitcoin truly decentralized and a, a neutral network um, through the process of uh, dilution of the centralized starting point which is the ever increasing number of you know, the, the ever increasing amount of competition through the growing number of miners on the network the uh, the increasing strength of the chain the chain of signatures on the network that holds all the developers to the account a constantly scaling market uh, a locked protocol a fixed supply um, they're, they're the two things that nobody must control, which is obviously the protocol. So then you can just get developers building, but the actual protocol, the foundation is locked and the and the the supply is locked. They are the two things that no one can have any uh, any control over. Um, and so in this image here, um, which I created, 
We uh, obviously got the image of the uh, the world and the globe in the middle with Bitcoin across it, and then this as the uh, the outer layer. This this is the Bitcoin network. This is the digital foundation that all businesses, the the entire world, the entire digital world, which basically is the entire world because we all run on digital technology these days, will run on because di Bitcoin is the foundation for immutable digital data. Like who? Who would do or write anything if if they wanted it to be deleted? If you want it to be deleted, it's got no value. Or the only reason you would, the only other thing you would want it to be deleted is if you knew it was false. You know, if you were purposely trying to to break the law, do something criminal, or do something negative, where you didn't want a record of what you had been doing. You know, so it's criminal enterprise. So why would you not want immutable data? All businesses want immutable data. They are paranoid about keeping their records safe. Yeah, that's why they, they write it once and uh, is it, uh, read once, write many. Um, storing it in multiple locations, as I've said before many times on this show. Uh, you know, employing services like you know, Microsoft Cloud and Amazon Web Services and you know, all these other places just to, because they're paranoid about keeping their data safe. And then obviously you've got hackers that could actually... Uh, you know, um, blackmail you, you know, with the, the WannaCry um, virus software thing, um, you know, virus. It's none of that, none of that can be done on blockchain technology. No computer viruses can exist. How much of a weight is that off your shoulder? Would you pay a micropayment for that? Yeah, but it's not just simply a micropayment. You pay that micropayment because it is your data that you're creating. And then you put that onto the blockchain. So a micro a micropayment is a micropayment because it's irrelevant. A micropayment is just simply the smallest movement of data that is still economically viable for miners and payment processes to do. That's it. That that's 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 the microtransaction. So literally the entire world will run on this because it is economically sustained and incentivized. And being economically sustained means it has to have a credible money running on it. And a money has to be neutral. It has to be decentralized. And that is what takes all of these shit coins out. Because the one killer question that you have to ask all of these people who are in shit coins like, you know, EOS and Proof of Stake and Premind and Hedra Hashgraph and IOTA Tangle and tokens, all this kind of crap is where is the competition in the system? Where is it? Where is the competition in proof of stake? There is none. It is competition that that decentralizes the different participants on the network. So if there is no competition, the network is then centralized. So proof of stake therefore is centralized and because it's centralized it has no credibility or value as money same with pre-mind where's the competition there is none therefore it's centralized it is controlled by a single entity it has no credibility as money it cannot be used to economically sustain the network it will crumble same with tokens because tokens run on a blockchain which have a consensus algorithm. So tokens are literally absolutely worthless as money anyway. They're literally, you know, either tickets or um, uh, uh, certificates of ownership, you know, or asset tokens representing something. They're, they're, they're not money. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything. So I mean, there's only proof of work. Only proof of work coins can be money. So because, because proof of work is competitive. And then you have to look at the credibility of the of these different proof of work uh, networks and chains. So let's take, for example, um, Ada. You know, Cardano. <laughs> Cardano can, has centralized mining. Cardano can only be mined by input output Hong Kong. So therefore, you have centralized mining, which completely strikes that out. Uh, then you have uh, anonymous coins or supposedly anonymous coins like Monero. But because a Monero is anonymous, there is nothing holding the creator of a system to account. You just simply cannot tell if they are just increasing the supply for their own ill-gotten gains. It's anonymous. There's no way of tracing it or telling what they're doing. Or so they thought. But we'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, and what else was there? You know, let's say Litecoin. 
Litecoin, Litecoin is the closest competitor that the Bitcoin has got. And it's and it was purely designed as a joke and an exit. Well, he says it's a joke. We all know it was an exit scam by Charlie Lee. You know, the greatest exit scam in history. You know, without a doubt. Because it looks like he's done it and he's got away with it. In style. It's not like Charles Hoskinson. Charles Hoskinson might have got away with more, but he's not done it with style and grace and he's not given the required notice and all that. He will come a cropper. Was Char- Charlie Lee has pulled it off. Yeah, he has done it. <laughs> but you have to look at then the credibility of the system. He has always said, I created it and nobody has disputed that. So therefore you have a single creator of the currency, which means he has not created anything that neither the Chinese government nor the, uh, nor the uh, United States government could just simply replicate themselves overnight. Charlie Lee created that. Chinese government created this. American government created that. That is it. There is no credibility in something that has a centralized starting point. Same with Ethereum. And again, this is what Vitalik doesn't realize. It is the neutral growth of the network that gives it credibility, which is why it can only be Bitcoin because people haven't looked at how this was created. First of all, you've got the white paper being released on 31st of October, 2008. This was the most dangerous point ever because this is where literally Satoshi let it go. He literally put the paper out there with all the code that you would ever need for somebody to start the system themselves. He literally let it go, which you know um, people people overlook this part. All the research that he had done, everything he'd done, you know, and he was still willing to let it go because he knew it was part of the process of giving it credibility. So releasing it 31st of October gave him the best chance of leaving it two months before uh, before he started it himself on the 3rd of January underneath uh, under a pseudonym, and then stepping away from the project to just simply let it grow. There's your fundamental value in Bitcoin. Yeah, so then we've got, you know, Bitcoin Cash, and we'll come to this in just a minute, because uh, it looks like Roger Ver has uh, signed up to Twitch. Um, uh, Bitcoin Cash, you know, wanting to go anonymous, <laughs> imposing this minor tax, totally centralized, utterly worthless. And then you've got uh, CoreCoin, which again, hasn't scaled, which is centralized. Well, you know, they've broken the chain of signatures and they've prevented it from scaling which means it is therefore totally centralized. They're building this second layer, which only they own, again, with no competition in it whatsoever. It's insane when you look at it like this. It is just so blatantly obvious. And these big boys like Fidelity, yeah, they are. They have got investigators on this. It won't take, you know, these people have intellect. They're not gonna be like these shit coiners, you know, who just like believe what they're told. Oh, the graph tells us this and therefore X, Y, Z, no fundamental understanding of where value comes from, not just simply looking at price. It's going to happen. All roads lead to uh, lead to Bitcoin, which is BSV, you know, and, and we know this. So uh, happy days. But let's uh, let's go on with the goss. Uh, I thought this was just quite funny. This is me uh, mucking around. So uh, Roger has said here, um, uh, diverting part of the Bitcoin Cash block reward to pay a single development team is a Soviet style central planner's dream come true. Please stop. And then like his armory sachet, you know, literally just going on about how he's gonna <laughs> code it so that 50% of the block reward or maybe 75% of the block reward goes to him. I mean, it's just, it's so stupid and schoolboy, it's ridiculous. But um, I see, yeah, Roger Ver pleading with his own creation. It's like something out of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Bitkenstein. <laughs> That's going to be my new name for the uh, for the Bitcoin cash fork. So this was, as I mentioned, something about Monero. So I said, uh, US Homeland Security can now track privacy. Crypto Monero. Criminals and child abusers shit themselves as they find out they're holding yet another shit coin. Uh, so this one was... Um, Key executives step down amid Binance acquisition. Um, so this, this this can't be. I mean, we expected this anyway. Rigging the system. <laughs> In late July, as the DeFi sector began to take off, CoinMarketCap added a top DeFi token by market capitalization section on their website. However, Binance Coin was listed as the number one DeFi token by market cap. BNB is not a DeFi token. <laughs> oh 
Oh dear. Right, the Binance team quickly made an announcement apologising and saying the mistake was due to human error. Yeah, too right. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, this was, um, uh, I was just looking at the term credit earlier and uh, just a little bit of uh, info for you. The term credit has its roots set in the Latin word creditum, meaning that which is entrusted or loaned, which also came from credere, um, which means to trust or entrust. So yeah, just a little bit of history on uh, on the word credit there and uh, what it means and how it came about. So let's go on to this other bit of gossip here. Check this out. Uh, so this was um, uh, Roger. Yeah, here we go. Check it out. So I, I even said um, this was this was my post. So I said, look, Coin Easy. Can Roger Ver being on Twitch be verified? 118 followers that's got 118 followers is it him is it him you know and what's he gonna do is he gonna come over and like you know try and divide and conquer i do not trust roger ver's motives i do not trust him he even appeared on the numpties and literally all he was promoting was cash fusion say so, oh yeah i want to tell you how amazing this cash fusion system is roger it makes the system anonymous it is illegal it's utterly worthless it's ridiculous. He just doesn't get it. People, it's time for Ding a Dong. I almost forgot. Good grief. Ding a Dong. Let's get it on. Let's have some. Let's do it. But until then, as ever, be aware. Take care. Stay safe out there. Joy given. See everybody soon. Catch you later. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch the full episode on Streamanity www.streamanity.com forward slash 8084 at moneybutton.com